Coming up, an early Wednesday morning car crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. And we are watching our next storm system getting ready to move into our area. We'll talk about rain chances and warmer weather coming up. And if you're a trail enthusiast, the city of Neosho has plans to roll out another two miles of bike trails. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Tanya Buck. I'm Chris Warner. There's something in my my eye. No, that's not a good way to start the day. And then <laughs> I got a new one of these little earpieces. So this one, it's not quite formed to my ear yet. It's somewhat uh, irritating right now, but that's not good. It'll it'll get there. It'll get there. So if you see me just kind of messing around, uh, don't worry. I don't have anything in my ear. This just in. <laughs> Hold on a second. What are they telling me? They're telling me <laughs> something here. I don't know what. I mean, it's nice uh, to have this new one, but it's uh, new, so it's not quite shaped to my large ear yet but it'll get there well, good. it has to eventually it just feels very strange feels like it keeps wanting to fall out but it's not it's distracting it's annoying but it's good like i said it's a new one and it's nice so you know what else is nice our forecast for at least the next couple of days now we are watching our next storm system off to our northwest that's going to bring us our rain chances as we head into the weekend and the start of next week. Right now, though, nothing to worry about. Pretty decent seventh and range line, clear sky, 64. It's another, you know, again, by August standards, it's another chilly start to the day. 65 V8 Center, 62 in Columbus, and 63 in Neosho as we start the day. As the kids board the bus around 7 this morning, it's going to be 63. It's some partly cloudy skies. And as the bus brings them home later, it's going to be warming up today. 90 degrees by 3 o'clock under mostly sunny skies. Going through today, it's going to be an, a hot one, warmer than yesterday, 92 for an afternoon high, 85 by noon, 91 at 5. And uh, that last number is actually a little inaccurate. That's supposed to be 85 at 8 o'clock. It's not going to get that hot. And going into tonight, another cool night ahead, 64 for an overnight low, 71 at 11, 68 by 2 under clear skies. And we're still watching those weekend storm chances as well, 92 on Saturday, 93 on Sunday. Definitely want to keep an eye to the sky. We're not anticipating at this time anything severe, but thunderstorms can disrupt your weekend activities. So you may want to make sure you're up on the latest forecast, and that's what we're going to continue to bring you as we uh, get closer to the weekend. And those rain chances aren't just limited to the weekend. We're going to talk more about how long they're going to stick around, how much rain we might see, and look at that seven-day forecast for you here in a few minutes. A lot of details you'll want to know before you start your day. Exactly. Some things because, well, I mean, we're only a day and a half away from the weekend starting, so we want to make sure that you're ready to go and ready for next Monday. Not like we want Monday to be here, but it's good to know what's coming. We like to plan ahead, so that's exactly. a good thing. That's why we have the seven-day forecast. There you go. All right. Thanks, Chris. When early morning head on crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. Shortly after 8 a.m. yesterday, authorities responded to the scene of a fatal crash on Route T, two miles southwest of Bolivar, Missouri. Killed in the crash, the superintendent of Dadeville Schools, 48-year-old Matthew Bushy of Bolivar. A 17-year-old also in the vehicle was transported with serious injuries to a Springfield, Missouri hospital. Missouri State Highway Patrol says a Ford F-150 crossed the center line and struck the Bushy vehicle head on. Pickup was driven by a 16 year old male from Bolivar. His name was not released in a statement on the website. The Daveville School District shared the news of Bushy's passing. You can read the full statement from Dateville Schools on our website at koamnewsnow.com. City of Joplin holds a public meeting to discuss a property tax levy in the city. The council approved an ordinance that includes a tax levy on the Joplin Public Library. Property tax has been authorized by the voters already. Um, this, is, this is not a new tax. So cities, school districts, they, re, they have to reset their property tax levy every year using this calculation by the state auditor's office. Joplin says the city property tax represents a very small portion of the overall property tax liability for the citizens of Joplin. Ukrainians living in the four states think about their country as Wednesday marked the 31st anniversary of its independence from the Soviet Union. The war in Ukraine is entering its seventh month, and those we spoke to in Joplin say the war makes it a hard day to celebrate. 
one saying it's obvious that Ukrainians want to remain their own country. Honestly, everybody thinks that maximum one week and uh, Ukraine will surrender and uh, it will be Russia there. But um, surprisingly, our people, Ukrainian people, was strong and protective and world around can see how much we want our freedom, our independence. Coming up later in the show, our own Shagun Bombadeli takes a closer look at the story. One million cups hits the road to Carthage. Every Wednesday, they meet for coffee while two entrepreneurs speak to local chamber members about their business. The purpose of these meetings is to help get feedback and empower small business owners. One Million Cups is a nonprofit organization with more than 160 chapters across the county. It's not a sales pitch that we let people come up and talk. It's, hey, this is what we do, this is what we're struggling with, and here's what I need help with. And then the magic happens when we have the question and answer time because then people are given ideas or, hey, I can help you with that or whatever. So we're really building a community of entrepreneurs. One Million Cups group takes a road trip every three months to get out in the community for local small business owners who cannot make it to the weekly meets. Well, more bike trails could soon roll out across Neosho, Missouri. The Flower Box City right now has about eight and a half miles of bike trails put in about three years ago. Now there are plans to add two miles. City's park supervisor says the bike trails attract people from as far as northwest Arkansas and Springfield. There is a little bit for everybody uh, with our bike trails. And that, that was the goal is to fix it where, uh, where people could come in and just ride, walk. You can even walk part of the bike trails. Uh, as long as you're not on the downhill trails, you're good. Additions to the current bike trail depend on Neosho City Council's approval. All right, let's take a quick look into the future here on the future track. As we head into the weekend, you can see those scattered thunderstorm chances. And the thing is, is they stick with us all the way into the start of next week with even better chances by midweek next week as we watch these storms move on in. And here's a quick look at the rain. So as you can see, the first couple of days, there's really not much, but as we head into next week, we start to see the rain add up. We're talking anywhere from half an inch to maybe even two inches in parts of northeast Oklahoma. And the seven-day forecast looking decent too. 96 tomorrow, 92, 93 on the weekend. And we stay warm but seasonable as we head into next week as we watch continuing storm chances Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So some much-needed rain is on the way. And the temperatures, yes, they're hot, but they're seasonable and they, they're... They're temperatures that we can manage, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News, the Joplin Eagles softball team looks to soar to new heights under a new head coach and new expectations. Chris has a preview of the upcoming season in sports. Plus, the White House unveils its plan to address millions of dollars in student loan debt. Some welcome the move, but critics say the money has to come from somewhere. We want to know what you think. And experts say your chances of being st struck by lightning are less than one in a million. But it does happen, and it can be deadly. We've got information from the experts on what you can do to avoid it. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. More real news in the morning. We'll be right back. This week is the first week of the regular season for Missouri high school football. The Carthage Tigers kick off their schedule on Friday night hosting Republic. Carthage is riding a 21 game regular season winning streak in the Friday's game. Last year they were a perfect 9 and 0 in the regular season, including winning this matchup with Republic 35 to 14. The Tigers have a lot of talented guys coming back from uh, back from that team, but one area they, to watch Friday night will be the offensive line. Carthage has a few new guys up front looking to lead what is always a strong group for Carthage football. We have three new faces up there. We got two quality returners with Drew Mushy and Malachi House, but three new faces that we have no idea what to expect from those guys. Uh, Tyler Willis is back at tight end as well. We consider him a lineman too. But uh, that's, that's the biggest group right there that's going to make or break us. The first Monday practice, um, we, we were very timid. Didn't really want to try, I'd say. Didn't want to get physical. Right now, we're probably 
almost as physical as we need to be on Friday night, and we will be that Friday night. They need to be physical, they need to communicate, they need to get off the football, they need to have a great pad level, and they need to finish blocks. Now, some news we first broke to you yesterday morning. Kansas City Chiefs legend and NFL Hall of Fame quarterback Lynn Dawson passed away yesterday at the age of 87. Dawson led the Chiefs to their first ever Super Bowl title in 1969, earning Super Bowl MVP honors and the nickname Lenny the Cool. He was inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame as a player in 1987 and as a broadcaster in 2012. The Joplin Eagles kick off their softball schedule this week. The Eagles head into this season with a new head coach and a little momentum. Our own Danny Terzer caught up with the team as they close in on game number one. Good. Now read this one, Peyton. Good. The Joplin Eagles are two days out from their season opener. And after Tuesday's jamboree, the Eagles are excited to show what they're made of. We had our jamboree last night and it was really, really nice to hear them talking to each other about what bunk coverage are we in? Where are we going with the ball? I was really impressed by that. So the left side of our infield, it's almost like telepathic the way they communicate. That left side includes junior Bailey Ledford. Bailey Ledford does a great job at third base. She's going to lead by example. She's going to be there. She's going to make the play. She plays really, really hard. Um, so we're really happy with the play that she's given us. And senior Izzy used at shortstop. We're going to lean on our defense, keeping scores low and hopefully scoring more than the other team. And here, what does that ball do in the outfield when it comes down? It it's going to have a bounce, okay? And we know how to play that bounce, but they might not know. And we're going to lean on our base running. We've got a lot of speed this year, and we hope to make that a weapon for us. You're rounding that thing hard coming out of that box, making sure you're looking for two. As for pitching, it's a mix of experience and youth. This year we've got uh, really an anchor on the staff with Jill McDaniel being a senior, fourth year in the circle. She does a great job. We've got two freshmen uh, that will probably see significant varsity time in Ava Wolf and Kaylin Bobski. They both threw last night in the Jamboree and did a really nice job for us. They won't be the only underclassmen stepping up. The Eagles are rounded out by a sophomore class with experience and drive. Last year, my class, there were some girls who, like, they had the potential. It was just they had to build up for it and adjust to high school. And this year, I've seen a lot of them grow just over the summer and just... Our team, I think, is going to be pretty solid. In Joplin, Danny Terzer, KOAM Sports. Joplin will kick off the season with a pair of games on Friday facing both Aurora and Carl Junction. St. Louis Cardinals hit the field Wednesday night for game four of their five-game series against the rival Chicago Cubs. Guards have won two of the first three against Chicago and nine of their last ten games overall. They look to stay hot and secure the series win, but it was the Chicago show last night, rolling 7-1. Bar's new bar had the only RBI of the night for St. Louis with a solo home run in the fifth. Kansas City Royals finish up a two-game set against the Diamondbacks last night. The Royals are aiming for the split after dropping game one Tuesday night. Kansas City gets it done 5-3. Bobby Witt Jr. hits a three-run homer while Brady Singer another great start on the mound, allowing just one run in seven innings. Still to come, Germany looks to become the first country in the world to roll out a rail line run entirely on hydrogen powered trains. Got those details for you. And we got the details of your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Hard to see on the tower cam, but the skies are clear as we start the day today in Joplin. And we may see a few passing clouds, but they're otherwise going to remain clear. 64 in the city right now with a light westerly breeze. That wind will shift back out of the east a little later. A uh, nice start to the day too. 65 Yates Center, 62 Columbus, 65 in Lamar, and 65 in Carthage. Now as the kids get on the bus today, about 7 a.m., it should be 63 with some passing clouds. And as the bus returns home, mostly sunny skies and a hot one in store for us today, 90 by 3 o'clock. So let's talk about what you can expect for today. We're looking at an afternoon high of 92, and I totally forgot to change this. It's supposed to be 85. I will change it next time, I promise. 85 by noon, 91 by 5, and 85 by 8 o'clock under mostly clear skies. Mostly clear skies stick with us through tonight. Overnight low about 64, 71, and 11, 68 by 2 a.m. Reaching that overnight low bright and early tomorrow morning. Still watching those scattered thunderstorm chances Saturday and Sunday. Sunday looks to be the better chance for storms, but both days could have storms 92 and 93 on both those days. And you can see that on the future track. So as we head through Saturday, you can see it's much more of a scattered situation on Saturday. And then Sunday,
Sunday is when it becomes a little bit more widespread, still scattered in nature, but out there a little bit more. And you can see too, as we head into Monday and even into Tuesday, those thunderstorm chances hang out with us. They keep temperatures uh, in check for the most part, which is nice, but we still see them nonetheless. And the seven day forecast shows us this. Decent temperatures. Like I said they're hot, but these are seasonable for this time of year. Rain chances hold on all the way through the middle of next week with overnight lows flirting with the 70s over the next several nights. Well, relief is on the way for millions of Americans with federal student loans. Yesterday, President Biden pledged to wipe away thousands of dollars of college debt, and the administration is also proposing big changes to the repayment programs. Skylar Henry has the details. Another campaign promise fulfilled, with President Joe Biden announcing student debt relief for federal borrowers. Here's what my administration is going to do to provide more breathing room for people so they have less burden by student debt. The president's plan forgives $20,000 of debt for Pell Grant recipients and $10,000 for other borrowers, and it's capped for borrowers who earn less than $125,000. Additionally, the Department of Education has proposed new rules that would cap income-driven repayment plans at 5% of monthly income and overhaul the public service loan forgiveness program. For anybody with student loans, it's a big deal. This could totally wipe out the student loan burden for about a quarter of borrowers. The Biden administration is also extending the moratorium on federal student loan repayments one last time, with payments set to resume after this year's midterm elections in January. Moderate Democrats, progressive Democrats don't want to see uh, tens of millions of Americans get student loan bills just before they're asking voters to go to the to the polls. But top Republicans are slamming it as inflationary. Just think about how unfair this is for all the Americans who are harmed by this, who are now on the hook for hundreds of billions of dollars of other people's loans. In a scathing statement, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell dubbed the president's plan student loan socialism. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The president says the Department of Education will release more guidance in the coming weeks for federal borrowers to apply for the student debt relief. That brings us to our something to talk about this morning. Do you agree with wiping out student loan debt? Simple yes or no vote today. You can vote in our app, do so on our website, and of course take part in the discussion on our Facebook page. We are back with Health Watch right after this. Topping Health Watch this morning, the chance of being struck by lightning in a given year is less than one in a million. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but a few recent high profile cases make clear lightning is dangerous and can be deadly. Mandy Gaither has more from an expert on how to avoid a lightning strike. It comes and goes in a flash. Um, it was like a huge bum. Lightning can strike anywhere. We heard it inside the church, knocked off the electricity. Being hit is rare. So far, 14 people have died from lightning strikes in the U.S. this year, according to the National Weather Service. Most people survive, but you can face serious health issues. You can lower your risk by going inside when you hear thunder, says Ron Hawley with the National Lightning Safety Council. Don't ask questions. Simply go to a large substantial building or a will enclose metals out vehicle. A lightning safe structure is one that has grounded wiring and plumbing, like most homes and buildings in the U.S. Tents and places like sheds, dugouts, and picnic shelters are not safe from lightning strikes. During a storm, you should also stay away from porches or balconies and things that may conduct electricity, like corded electrical devices. You don't want to be t touching the water running in the sink or in the shower or in the bathtub. Those are very good. Conductors. Trees and lightning are a dangerous combination. Holly says the strike can hit a tree and conduct ground current to a victim. There can also be a side flash where the tree is hit and a portion of the current hits someone near it. Or lightning can cause the bark or a limb to explode. It only lasts a few tenths of a second, but during that time, it is incredibly strong. For health, Respino, I think his name was. If getting indoors is not possible, there are still a few things that may slightly lessen your risk. In a thunderstorm, avoid open fields, the top of a hill, or ridge top. Likewise, you should stay away from tall, isolated objects like trees and immediately leave any bodies of water. 
That's a look at one of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Yeah, that's what you just caught us. We were chatting about lightning and its dangers. Um, I'm not 100% certain that I've been impacted by lightning, but I was telling Tanya there was a time I was a kid. I was in our kitchen. A storm had woken me up. I was probably 12, 13. I was making SpaghettiOs. Our kitchen was really small. And the next thing I know, I'm up against the... Oh, geez, I almost broke this thing. I'm up against the wall. SpaghettiOs are upside down on the floor, and there's this ringing in my ears. And then I hear the clap of thunder, and then later that day we went outside, and sure enough, there was a tree outside that window that had been hit by lightning. So lightning is dangerous regardless, and you really need to heed those safety tips. And lightning is something we may have to deal with. I really hope I didn't break this thing. I didn't mean to crash into it as hard as I did. Uh, anyway, so we are watching our next storm system that'll be coming in this weekend. Right now, 7th and Range Line. Some activity going on down on the roads and nothing in the skies though. Clear 64 is where we're at. We are sitting in the 60s across the area. 65 Yates Center, 63 Columbus and in Neosho as well. As the kids get on the bus this morning, it's going to be a nice one. 63 at 7 a.m., but a hot one this afternoon. Mostly clear skies, afternoon highs pushing about 90 by 3 o'clock. Going through the day, temperatures looking good. 92 hot but seasonable 85 by noon 91 by 5 and 85 by 8. I said I'd fix that. I just haven't yet tonight. Not bad either 64 again for an overnight low clear skies. Temperatures gradually get there and we're still watching those scattered thunderstorm chances Saturday and Sunday and the best chance looks to be Sunday, but we're still watching chances on Saturday as well. So make sure you keep an eye to the sky this weekend. We've got more of the KOA and morning news right after this. Coming up, an early Wednesday morning car crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. We've got another cool start to the day across the area, but temperatures are going to warm up to the hot range today, and we're checking on rain chances coming up. And if you're a trail enthusiast, the city of Neosho has plans to roll out another two miles of bike trails. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's now 531. I'm Tanya Bach. I'm Chris Warner. It is a very nice morning today. I don't have any interesting stories, honestly, on the way in. I did see some cats on uh, Ivy Road and uh, YY. Any black cats? They were both path? black cats, actually. So I, I'm, you know, going to watch through the day. So we'll be live at noon in the O Show for our More Power right. Tour. Um, and so I'll just be very careful on the drive down there. I, I'm certain that the black cats aren't a sign of bad luck. No. I had a couple in my life. I actually heard they were more good luck than bad luck. You know, um, it's, it's funny. My mom told me something similar about crickets, too. I don't know if you've ever heard this. So uh, we had an older house in Joplin. Um, I, if anybody at this house is watching, it was at uh, 19th and Moffitt. So if you're, you're watching, go out on the fence because the chain link fence is still there. I drew traffic lights and street signs, including the street Warner Warner Drive, I think is what I called it. And to my knowledge, that's all still written on the uh, fence post. So if you're living at 19th and Moffitt and you're watching this morning, go out today, <laughs> go check the fence, and you're going to see all of my traffic lights all along that chain link fence. Okay. I'm just saying. So that, yeah, just, just passing along. Anyway, <laughs> the crickets. I we was going to say, how does that pertain to crickets? It was an older house, so crickets would sometimes get into the kitchen. And I was going to kill one once when I was a kid, and my mom stopped me because she said that crickets in your house are supposed to be good luck, and if you kill them, it brings you bad luck. Oh. So if you have a cricket in your house, based on what my mom told me, don't kill it. At least save Catch it and release. let it outside. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have some bad luck. No bad luck with the forecast today, though. Clear skies at 7th and Range Line, 64 degrees in Joplin. we got 65 in Fredonia, 63 in Parsons, and 65 in Monette. We're all sitting quite nice. Kids getting on the bus around 7 a.m. Going to be about 63 under partly cloudy skies. When that bus brings them home, we're talking 90 degrees under sunny skies because we are heading for a hot one. Afternoon highs of 92. It's seasonable but hot compared to what we've seen. Uh, under mostly sunny skies, clear skies prevail tonight. Overnight low of 64 will gradually get there as the night progresses. And we are still watching those scattered thunderstorm chances on the weekend. 92 Saturday, 93 Sunday. And then those storm chances are going to stick with us. We're going to talk about the long range, uh, what that looks like, how much rain we may see, and what the seven-day forecast looks like here in just a little bit. But make sure you save the crickets. Right. Save Most important crickets. thing of the day, save the crickets. And if you live in that house, go check your fence. <laughs> 
And if you don't live there, don't annoy them. If, if, if you don't live there, please don't just drive by and check these people's fence. That might freak them out a little bit. But if you do live there and you're watching this morning, go check your fence. <laughs> okay. Well, an early morning crash. Our early morning head on crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. Shortly after 8 a.m. yesterday, authorities responded to the scene of a fatal crash on Route T, two miles southwest of Bolivar, Missouri. Killed in the crash, superintendent of Dadeville Schools, 48 year old Matthew Bushy of Bolivar. A 17 year old was also in the vehicle and was transported with serious injuries to a Springfield, Missouri hospital. Missouri State Highway Patrol say a Ford F-150 had crossed the center line and struck the Bushy vehicle head on. That pickup was driven by 16 year old male from Bolivar. His name was not released. In a statement on a website, the Dateville School District shared the news of Bushy's passing. You can read the full statement from Dateville Schools on our website at koamnewsnow.com. While the war continues in Ukraine, some Ukrainians living in southwest Missouri are pausing to think about their home country. KOM's Shagun Bamadali spoke to two Ukrainians on a day their country celebrates its independence. It's been six months since the war started in Ukraine, and today makes it 31 years of independence for Ukraine from the Soviet Union. I spoke to two Ukrainian citizens today, and they tell me what independence and freedom means to them. We are celebrating this day, 24th of August, and we celebrated with flowers and champagne until this, until this year. Alexandra Olofish says his mom is still in Ukraine. I do have my mom. She is still um, in Ukraine, but it's very difficult for, for her and it's very difficult for her to make a decision to leave a country where she was born and sh where she lived all her life and just move to the other place. So, yes, my mom is still in Ukraine. New York Times reports that there are 5,587 confirmed civilian deaths in Ukraine. I lost one of my friends during this war and this is, this is terrible. It, that's really sad to hear that news when you wake up in the morning and you, you can hear that one of your friends died. A local seamstress tells me that the war makes today a hard day to celebrate. She says it is obvious that Ukrainian wants to remain in their country. Honestly, everybody thinks that maximum one week and uh, Ukraine will surrender and uh, it will be Russia there. But um, surprisingly, our people, Ukrainian people, was strong and protective and world around can see how much we want our freedom, our independence. Lilia says misinformation has affected the war. Information, propaganda, what uh, Russian government through TV, radio station, I don't know, give to uh, them citizen, uh, completely cricket. Uh, they take some fact, kindly turn it upside down and give to people, and people of course believe them government. Lilia says she believes Ukraine will come out victorious from the war. In Joplin, Shango Mamdele, KOM News. Both Lilia and Alexander say they hope the war in Ukraine ends as soon as possible. All right, let's take a look at these rain chances that we're going to see. As we head into Saturday, you can see we do get the storms, but they're pretty scattered. They're still scattered Sunday, but just a bit more widespread. And as we head into Monday and even Tuesday of next week, more thunderstorm chances that are going to hang out with us. In fact, we could see anywhere upwards of a half inch to maybe even inch and a half of rain across the area over the next few days, which is rain that we most certainly need. And a quick check of that seven day forecast shows where that rain hangs out with us through the next week. So we'll be 92 today, 96 on Friday. Nice for the weekend. Seasonable temperatures, hot but seasonable. And then, like I said, the rain sticks with us through at least Wednesday of next week with overnight lows pushing the 70s. All right. Well, this morning we're discussing student loans and debt. And yesterday the White House unveiled its plan to reduce America's hefty student loan debt. Under the plan, more than 40 million Americans could see their student loan debt lowered. This decision, like all things in Washington, was met with cheers and criticism. For millions of Americans, this announcement comes as welcome relief to a massive financial burden. Critics say the cost of such a relief program will cost millions of dollars for millions of taxpayers 
who did not go to college? We want to know what you think. So our question to you this morning is, do you agree with wiping out student loan debt? You can vote yes or no. So far, 95% of you say no. Only 5% of you say yes. You can vote at koamnewsnow.com slash vote. Do so in the app and, of course, take part in our discussion on our Facebook page. So it's a tough call. I'll also say that right there. I mean, darned if you do, darned if you don't. Mm -hmm. Just depends on what side of the fence you're on and, and whether or not you've got that debt, because I'm sure if you've got that debt, you're like, all right. But for other people who don't have that problem, I can see the side of mm -hmm. they're saying, Or those well, that worked kinda... really hard to just finally finish paying theirs right. off. Right, they just finished paying theirs off or they've only got one more payment left. They're like, well, boy, this doesn't really do me any good. And mm -hmm. So, For those that are just about to enter into it with kids going into college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, make sure you vote. We want to we wanna know what you think. A lot of ways to look at that. Absolutely. And, that, and that's what we do as journalists. It's supposed to see both sides. You can e easily, in this one, it's easy to see both sides as well. For sure. All right. Well, that's a look at our top news stories. Coming up this half hour in the KOAM Morning News, we've got an update on a teenage pilot who just broke the record for the youngest pilot to fly around the world solo in a small aircraft. Plus, our own Amber Jenkins takes us down to the farm at Crowder College to take a closer look at the school's strong agriculture program. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. More real news in the morning. We'll be right back. Germany is introducing the world's first ever rail line to be entirely run on hydrogen powered trains. 14 hydrogen trains powered by fuel cell propulsion will run on the route in the town of Bremervorde, about 50 miles east of Hamburg. Among five of those trains debuted on Wednesday. All 14 will be up and running by the end of the year, replacing the diesel trains currently on the route. Hydrogen fuel is about four and a half times more efficient than diesel. The trains are emissions free and low noise. They have a range of 621 miles, meaning they can run for an entire day on the network on a single tank of hydrogen. Their top speed is 87 miles per hour, but the regular speeds on the line are between roughly 50 and 74 miles per hour. Plans are in the works to use the trains in Italy and France as well. A 17-year-old pilot becomes the youngest person ever to fly around the world solo in a small aircraft. Guinness confirmed the record after Mac Rutherford touched down in the Bulgarian capital of Sofia on Wednesday. The British-Belgian pilot's journey began there in March when he was still 16 years old, and since then he's flown over 52 countries across five continents. He started just a year after receiving his first pilot's license. Rutherford's feet also ratchets up a bit of sibling rivalry. The previous record holder <laughs> was his older sister. Zara. That's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back with the news you need to know before you head out the door. Look at that forecast as well. So there's a little sibling rivalry with that world record. I wonder how the sister feels about that. Seventh and range line is pretty clear right now. Temperature is also good. 64 in Joplin as we start the day. We've got 60s across the board. 64 for Donia, 66 in Chanute, 65 in Lamar and Carthage. So not a bad start to the day. As the kids get on the bus about 7 a.m., it'll be 63 under partly cloudy skies. Skies clear out and it gets hot today. Hot compared to what we've seen, but Still normal for this time of year, 90 by 3 o'clock. And as you go through the day, we're looking at an afternoon high of 92. So like I said, it's hot, but it's seasonable. We just have been spoiled by August. 85 at noon and 91 by 5. Going into tonight, another cool night. 64 for the overnight low under mostly clear skies. More of the KOAM morning news coming your way. Here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. An early morning head on crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. Shortly after 8 a.m. yesterday, authorities responded to the scene of a fatal crash on Route T, two miles southwest of Bolivar, Missouri. I'm killed in the crash. The superintendent of Dadeville Schools, 48 year old Matthew Bushy of Bolivar, 17 year old was also in the vehicle and was transported with serious injuries to a Springfield, Missouri hospital. Missouri State Highway Patrol says a Ford F-150 had crossed the center line and struck the bushy vehicle head on. That pickup was driven by a 16 year old male from Bolivar. His name was not released. In a statement on the website, the Dadeville School District shared the news 
of Bushy's passing. You can read that full statement from Dadeville School District on our website at koamnewsnow.com. City of Joplin holds a public meeting to discuss a property tax levy in the city. The council this week approved an ordinance that includes a tax levy on the Joplin Public Library. Joplin says the city property tax represents a very small portion of the overall property tax liability for the citizens of Joplin. PSU in Paraguay program has a new director, Angela Moot, who served as the university's study abroad coordinator, brings a lot of traveling experience to the program. 15-year-old program has students from Paraguay come finish their college degree in Pittsburgh. And she encourages students on campus to take a trip abroad to learn about the different cultures. According to Moots, the experience traveling brings can help people later on in their lives. One Million Cups hits the road to Carthage. Every Wednesday, the group meets for coffee while two entrepreneurs speak to local chamber members about their business. The purpose of these meetings is to help get feedback and empower small business owners. One Million Cups is a nonprofit organization with more than 160 chapters across the country. And that's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. As you head out the door this morning, we are starting the day pretty nice with clear skies. You can't see it on the tower cam, but trust me, they're clear out there. It is 64 in Joplin right now, the light westerly breeze, which will eventually become easterly later in the day. 60s across the board, 62 Sedan, 65 Independence, 63 in Columbus, and 63 in Monette. So not a bad start to an August day. As the kids get on the bus, we about 63 come 7 a.m. with that breeze shifting out of the east by then. 90 as they get off at about 3 o'clock under sunny skies. And those sunny skies are going to help us. It's going to be hot, but it's going to be seasonable. These temperatures are right about where they should be. 92 for an afternoon high. Looking at 85 by noon, 91 by 5, and 85 again by 8 o'clock under those mostly sunny skies. Those clear skies persist into the night. It's nice to say clear skies persist instead of saying storms persist. 64 for an overnight low, 71 by 11, 68 by 2, and reaching that overnight low by tomorrow morning. Still watching scattered thunderstorm chances both Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. Uh, better chances on Sunday, but we still have those chances Saturday. So this is going into Saturday. Few scattered storms. They're a little bit more widespread, but still scattered come Sunday. And as we head into Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday, those storm chances just hang around right on top of us, bringing us some much needed rainfall. In fact, you can see how much rain it might bring us. So we start out pretty slow, but as the storms really build in, you can see where we get accumulations of rain from anywhere from a half inch up to an inch and a half in some locations. And and a quick check of the seven day forecast. So we're looking at again 92 today, 96 tomorrow, 92 Saturday, 93 Sunday, 95 Monday, and then storm chances just hanging on. And they hang on long enough to bring temperatures back down into the upper 80s by midweek. We got more of the KOA of morning news coming your way. Well, Crowder Community College in Neosho is known for its extensive agriculture department. KOM's Amber Jenkins has more. Crowder Community College sits on 600 acres on the south side of Neosho. More than half of the 600 acres are farmland for young farmers to improve their craft. So actually doing hands-on freeze branding or they may be doing some, some hot branding, uh, giving vaccinations, part of the animal health protocol that we have throughout. Uh, we want to make sure that our students know how to do it safely and correctly. What Aggies learn goes beyond a grade. It's income for the college as well. Something that we are proud of that we have uh, some income opportunities through the, the sales of the calves and the lambs and the goats throughout uh, the seasons. And These Aggies will be more than just farmers. They are taught to be innovators. They can't farm like their grandfathers farmed. They're going to have to be more efficient. They're going to have to be more creative, multiple revenue streams. Crowder's strong agriculture tracks passionate young farmers who want to pursue the family tradition. It's always been something I've loved and been really interested in. And I always kind of knew that Crowder was close and that it had a great ag program. And this is where I wanted to come. Reporting in the Yosho, Amber Jenkins, KOEM News. Students are also preparing for a statewide contest on agriculture knowledge. Certainly sounds interesting. I competed in a lot of FFA state competitions in I, my high school days. I did not. It was uh, a lot of fun. Judging, judging meats, uh, dairy cattle judging, um, you name it, horticulture. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We'll I could tell you different type this. of, I could, I could grade different cuts of, you name it. Yeah. 
Interesting. We'll have to test this theory I used at to, some point. I actually used to, like, when I was in high school, I toyed with the idea of becoming a meat inspector and, you know, for my future career. But uh, I think it was like 100 degrees that summer in Manhattan. And, you know, we would be outside in the heat. Then you'd go inside for three hours in a freezing cooler and then back outside and... Man, I got like just the temperature changes. Yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't handle it. I it don't. Was tough. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. Um, I had a similar situation. I was working inventory control at Walmart, and I'd have to go into the ice cream freezer, which is kept at like negative ten degrees. And the, so the little hand scanner that I had to scan the barcodes and punch in inventory counts would freeze up after yeah. being in there for too long. And then you'd go into a dairy cooler where it's 40 degrees and it felt hot in there compared to that ice cream freezer. I guess it wasn't a freezer where the meats were, but it was definitely really cold. Big change. <laughs> I you understand know, 60 that. 60-degree yeah. temperature change. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, I totally understand that one. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have one quick check of the forecast when we come back. Quick check of the bus stop forecast. 63 when they board that bus under partly cloudy skies. 90 when they get off the bus under sunny skies. we got more of the KOA Morning News coming up. Coming up, as the Ukrainian-Russian war rages on, local Ukrainians think about their country's independence 31 years ago from the Soviet Union. Clear skies to start the day and another mild night for us. We have rain chances on the way and warmer temperatures. We're going to talk about all of that coming up. And the PSU in Paraguay program gets a new director. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 6 a.m. I'm it Tanya is. Buck. I'm Chris Warner. It's a very nice start to the day. It's a nice morning. Uh, as we warned folks earlier, don't go by that house at 19th and Moffat unless you live there. Please don't. <laughs> I'm I do like, not, that's what he first said. I that's don't not what he meant. <laughs> want to. No, I, that's, yeah, that's because, I, like I said, I grew up there. My, my family lived there about 30 years and I lived there for the first 22 years of my life. So I'm just saying, don't go by that house and check it out. If you're living there and you're watching, go check out the fence. Otherwise, you can drive by at a normal pace. Yeah, don't, just drive don't by creep. the house don't and, and take a glance, and you'll <laughs> probably see it anyway. So just don't don't freak out the folks that live there. Um, they, I'm sure they do not want a wagon train, a vehicle circling the block, staring at their house. Uh, something you'll be able to stare at right now is stars in the sky because skies are pretty clear. Seventh and range line, 63 degrees right now. And we are sitting in the 60s. We've got 64 in Iola, 63 Fort Scott, 64 in Lamar, and 64 also in Carthage. A nice start to the day. Bus stop forecast by 7 a.m. We're looking at 63 partly cloudy skies with a light east breeze. Light east breeze continues and then it heats up though. Sunny skies 90 by 3 o'clock. And here's what we're doing. It's going to be hot today. But it's going to be seasonable. 92 for an afternoon high under mostly sunny skies. Another cool evening, though. 64 for an overnight low under those mostly clear skies. And as mentioned, we're watching scattered thunderstorm chances heading into the weekend. 92 Saturday, 93 on Sunday. We're going to talk a little bit more about those storm chances and take a look at the seven-day forecast here in just a few minutes. All right. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Chris. We always have a plan. Every morning. We try. We are the plan. Well, at least we start with one. <laughs> we, we do. We, we start with a plan. We talked about that. Producers have a plan. We have a plan. It's just a matter if it goes to that plan. All right, moving along. An early morning head-on crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school. Shortly after 8 a.m. yesterday, authorities responded to the scene of a fatal crash on Route T, two miles southwest of Bolivar, Missouri. Killed in the crash. Superintendent of Dadeville Schools, 48-year-old Matthew Bushy of Bolivar. A 17-year-old was also in the vehicle and was transported with serious injuries to a Springfield, Missouri hospital. Missouri State Highway Patrol says a Ford F-150 had crossed the center line and struck the Bushy vehicle head-on. The pickup was driven by a 16-year-old male from Bolivar. His name was not released. In a statement on the school's website, the Dadeville School District shared the news of Bushy, Bushy's passing. If you can read the full statement from Dadeville Schools on our website at komnewsnow.com. Southeast High School in Cherokee, Kansas, helps students with their wardrobe. Threads for Success was started by the FCCLA teacher and students to help those who cannot find the right outfit for interviews. Paris Vertil won the Outstanding Teacher Award and $500 through a local radio station. She's taking her winnings and using it to buy more men's clothing and extended sizes. 
While some students celebrate student loan forgiveness, others are celebrating the start of the new school year. On Wednesday, Crowder College hosted its annual cookout on the quad. Not only was there good food, but the event also helped students connect with local businesses. First week of school, so our students are nervous and excited and we want to make sure they understand all the things that we have to offer. And sometimes you got to bring it to them in a way where they can't miss it. So out here on a beautiful sunny day, this is a great opportunity for our students to see what we have to offer. Next week, Crowder College will host its bargain bonanza at the Student Center. One million cups hits the road to Carthage, Missouri every Wednesday. The group meets for coffee while two entrepreneurs speak to local chamber members about their business. The purpose of these meetings is to help get feedback and empower small business owners. One million cups is a nonprofit organization with more than 160 chapters across the country. It's not a sales pitch that we let people come up and talk. It's, hey, this is what we do. This is what we're struggling with and here's what I need help with. And then the magic happens when we have the question and answer time because then people are given ideas or, hey, I can help you with that or whatever. So we're really building a community of entrepreneurs. The One Million Cups group takes a road trip every three months to get out in the community for local small business owners who cannot make it to the weekly meets. Ukrainians living in the four states think about their country as Wednesday marks the 31st anniversary of its independence from the Soviet Union. The war in Ukraine is entering its seventh month and those we spoke to in Joplin say the war makes it a hard day to celebrate. One saying it's obvious that Ukrainians want their country to remain its own sovereign nation. Honestly, everybody thinks that maximum one week and uh, Ukraine will surrender and uh, it will be Russia there. But um, surprisingly, our people, Ukrainian people, was strong and protective and world around can see how much we want our freedom, our independence. Lilia says she hopes the war in Ukraine ends as soon as possible. PSU and Paraguay program has a new director. Angela Moots, who served as the university's study abroad coordinator, brings a lot of traveling experience to the program. The 15-year-old program has students from Paraguay come finish their college degree in Pittsburgh, and she encourages students on campus to take a trip abroad to learn about different cultures. Moots says the experience traveling brings can help people later in their lives. Traveling is just an amazing experience. Studying abroad, it really opens your eyes to older cultures. It helps you step outside your comfort zone. And it's a really great asset for a future career to be able to interact with people with different opinions and beliefs and different cultures. Pitt State currently has eight students from Paraguay on campus. They also have 13 students in Paraguay taking general education classes who will attend PSU later on. Well, on this date, this one I like. Back in 1939, The Wizard of Oz opens in theaters. It became one of the most beloved movies in history, based on the 1900 children's novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. The film star Judy Garland as the young Kansas farm girl Dorothy, who, after being knocked unconscious in a tornado, dreams about following a yellow brick road alongside her dog. Toto to the Emerald City to meet the Wizard of Oz. Now, along the way, Dorothy encounters a cast of characters, including the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, and of course, the Wicked Witch of the West. Well, the scenes in Kansas were shot in traditional black and white. Oz appears in vivid Technicolor, a relatively new film process at the time. So I remember um, every spring CBS would air this movie. And it was a family tradition of ours to gather around the TV and watch The Wizard of Oz every year. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic movie. I think they started doing that in the, the late 80s, possibly. It sounds about Some, right. Because that, I that's know about most the first time I saw it was when I was, I was very young. I was like seven or eight when I saw it for the first time. Yeah, it's a good movie. Well, I need to watch it with the kids. I don't think they've seen it. We're going to have to show it to them sometime. It's great. So talking about, uh, you know, rain, at least no tornadoes to worry about, thankfully, but rain is on the way. We've got scattered thunderstorm chances Saturday and then they're still scattered come Sunday, but there's a few more of them come Sunday. And then as we head into Monday and Tuesday, storm chances really pick up and take a look at the rain that they could dump on us. So this map starts out slow 
And then as we head through the weekend and get into next week, you can see where we could get a decent amount of rain and it is rain that we certainly need across the area. Seven day forecast shows tomorrow, by the way, heading up for 96. Rain chances build in Saturday and they last all the way through the middle of next week, keeping temperatures seasonable and decent for this time of year. There you go. That's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News, Chef Anthony steps back into Studio K to bring us a sweet treat you don't want to miss. In fact, he stepped in right now. He's already here. He's sitting over there. He's right here. Plus, Biden announces his plan for student loan debt relief. And why girls who play lacrosse need headgear mandated. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. More real news in the morning. We'll be right back. Copy Nation Watch this morning. President Biden unveiled a plan aimed at reducing America's ballooning student loan debt, which he says is making it harder for people to reach the middle class. Under the long awaited forgiveness plan, the Biden administration says more than 40 million Americans could see their student loan debt lowered. As Bradley Blackburn explains, though, it's an announcement being received with both cheers and harsh criticism. Kevin Rice welcomed President Biden's student loan debt forgiveness plan even if it doesn't erase all the money owed for his daughter Cameron's college degree. I was hoping that it would be more than $10,000, but hey, I'll take what, you know, that they give us. All this means people can start, finally crawl out from under that mountain of debt. The president's announcement Wednesday delivers on his campaign promise by erasing $10,000 in federal student loan debt for those with annual incomes below $125,000 or couples earning less than $250,000. The plan would cancel an additional 10,000 for those who received Pell Grants. Both of these targeted actions are for families who need it the most. I've racked up a lot of debt and it would be a huge financial blessing to like get rid of at least even a little bit of that. My parents were able to get by working throughout college and pay for it themselves, but I can't do that on my own. Republicans denounced the plan as an insult to those who have repaid their debt. I think fundamentally uh, when we borrow money, we ought to pay it back. Some parents also expressed opposition. I just put two kids through college. I saved my whole life. Looking for a government handout wasn't part of my family heritage, and it's not part of what I think we should be doing in America today. Some question whether the president has the authority to forgive student debt, raising the prospect of legal challenges down the road. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. It's unclear exactly how much the move will cost the federal government, though one estimate has it at as high as $300 billion. President Biden also extended a pause on federal student loan payments, saying it was the final time he'd do that. Now the pause is set to run through the end of the year with repayments starting in January. So look at one of today's top national stories. As we look at the forecast, it's going to be pretty decent. 92 for an afternoon high, 91 otherwise. Uh, by five o'clock, I mean sunny skies to deal with. And as we head into tonight, 94 for an or my goodness, 64 for an overnight low. 94 would be a bit extreme under mostly clear skies. We'll have more about your forecast a little later as well. But first, we've got Chef Anthony coming to make us another delicious recipe right after the break. Welcome back. It's Thursday and we've got Chef Anthony in studio with us this morning from Pittsburgh High School High School Culinary Arts Program. And you guys just kicked off your school year. That's right. We kicked off our school year on Friday and it's been an interesting adventure so far. So it's been a lot of fun. We're now ready one to go. thing you did for your students, um, the incoming freshmen, mm -hmm when they would come in for their introductory class on Thursday was you made them something special. That we day. make chocolate chip cookies for them. It gives them a chance to come in, have a cookie, relax a little bit. It tends to help that day run just a little bit smoother for them, not so intense and intimidating. So, and it, it works. The kids love it. And the, of course, everyone who's in there already loves them. So. And it's hard to eat just one. Yeah, it is. But when you have almost, uh, we had, over 200, oh, yeah. 225 freshmen coming in. So we had quite a bit coming in, but we took care of them. There we always go. welcome, we love having the new students come in. So we're gonna make chocolate chip cookies today. Um, this is exactly what my baking and pastry class is working on right now. So we're gonna go through a little bit of the lesson that they go through when they're learning to do this and learning every, and when we move on to the next, next one, we're gonna talk about the rest of the stuff that they learn when doing this. So we'll start with the basics. We have granulated sugar, 
and we have brown sugar and we have our butter. Now make sure that your butter is at room temperature. Now what type of butter do you typically use? Regular butter. Butter, butter, butter. Not margarine, not, I can't believe it's not butter, but straight regular butter. Have you ever used shortening when making uh, You can do shortening. You can do a 50-50 on shortening. It just depends on how you want them to come out. The 50-50 sh with shortening tend to be just a little chewier and like a, the red bag chips of ways. Okay. Um, I like mine because I like them soft in the middle and crispy on the edges so that when they hold up when I dip them into my glass of milk. And you get that with the butter. And you get that with the butter. So we're going to cream all this together. And what you get when you're creaming it together, imagine that the butter is little balloons and the sugar crystals are sharp little squares and you're trying to get the sugar crystals to become part of the butter molecule. So you're pushing them together and trying to get them to come to form up. And you'll know because everything will lighten up and it doesn't take real long. We'll turn this off for a second and we're gonna scrape down the side to make sure we get a good mix. Oh yes. And it doesn't take long to get a good creamed mix. This is called the creaming technique. Can you pop it up a little bit? So oh, I'm gonna take it right on out so we can show okay. everybody. Sweet. high enough camera angle this morning to get that. Yeah. I forget, of, it's not very often I use this mixer. This is my favorite mixer. But okay. you can see your cookie dough. It should look and feel like wet sand. That way you know you're on the right path. And it lightens up considerably when, the, when you mix it all together because you have dark brown sugar and you have the white sugar and then your butter, it'll look just like that. It's very easy to identify and it starts to stick to the paddle a little bit. So we're gonna move on to step two, which is adding in our eggs. And two eggs, two. How many students do you get that have, haven't, been, haven't cracked an egg before? Does that ever happen? Oh, quite a few actually. Most of them, they either buy the liquids or they've never made cook breakfast for themselves. Oh wow. So it, it does tend to happen quite a bit and people are like, really? but it's becoming more and more popular where, or I should say, more and more of a fact and regulation that kids just don't have any idea. So you have recommendations on cracking eggs, like in, like, cause obviously you crack it straight into mm -hmm. that, but you know, when you're inexperienced, you tend to get broken shells. Crack it into a bowl. When you're working with kids at home. Crack that, it into, that yeah, exactly. Well. Crack it into a bowl and then transport it over. That way you can make sure that you don't have any shells in it. And I like this particular recipe because it comes together really simply. Now, I haven't had this on very much, but you can actually pop it out again. Pop it right back out again. <laughs> this is my mixer, so it's a little tighter, holds a little stronger. It looks like peanut butter, warm peanut butter. Mm -hmm. So you know you're on the right path. Now for the rest of the fun stuff, we're gonna start pulling it together. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and we're going to start with, we have baking powder and salt and vanilla. Yes. And I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to add my vanilla and I'm going to put my baking powder right in with my flour. And I'm going to put my salt right into my mixer. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit and make sure that gets mixed in real well. Now, we're gonna do the rest of this by hand. Okay. See, you wanna, when you get to this point, keeping an eye on it, a close eye on it to make sure that you get the mix that you want. You don't wanna overwork it because gluten will build up because we're adding flour. So we don't want an overly chewy, hard to eat cookie. So we wanna control this. Okay. So we're gonna add in a little bit of our flour. And we're going to mix. Slowly but surely. And it will all incorporate. I don't know when you wanna add some more. Go ahead and add a little bit more in there for us. There we go. If you mix, you can do this in the mixer. I like to do it by hand because then I can watch it to make sure that my dough is coming together correctly. 
and I'm getting a good mix because you want all of it to incorporate. And a mixer doesn't always get a good mix. Go ahead and add a little more. Get it all edges and everything. Yes, we want to make sure we get all the edges. We get that big bubble in the middle. And I noticed you put the chocolate chips in last after yes. the flour. Yes, that's my favorite part. I like to control that mix as well. I'm very, very controlling in my baking. Unlike my cooking where it's like, oh, it's kind of coming together. And just let it work on its own. I like to be in full control. Is it true, like, the difference between baking and cooking? Um, cooking is your your measurements of things are more of a suggestion, whereas in baking, you need to stick to the yes. amounts that are required for the measurements. And baking is a science. Cooking is an art. Yes. There we go. So when you're baking, you just kind of want to stick to what it is. Now, I have a friend who comes in and does brownie day, and she did made her own brownie recipe. It took her several years to get it just right the way she wanted it to be, mm -hmm. but it's perfect. And she's doctored and played with her recipe to make sure she gets the one that she wants. Get that last little bit. But it's actually a really good recipe. The kids love it when she comes in because she goes over everything with it. She may, melts her own chocolate. She makes a ganache to go inside the brownies. It's so good. And the kids and the faculty, the teachers, everybody loves brownie day. All right, well, we're almost out of time for this segment. And we're gonna so add our chocolate chips. Gonna add your chocolate chips and let you continue mixing, I guess, as we go to break. Yeah, when we come back later today, we're gonna go through all the different cookies you can make with this very simple base chocolate chip cookie dough. All right, sounds like a plan if there's any dough left. We'll be right back. In Health Watch this morning, mandated headgear may lower the risk of concussion for high school girls playing lacrosse. That's according to new data that shows fewer concussions in states where headgear is required. Male lacrosse players already wear helmets. That's a quick check of some health story for you. We're back with more of the KOA and Morning News after this. Coming up, as the Ukrainian-Russian war rages on, local Ukrainians think about their country's independence 31 years ago from the Soviet Union. A very nice start to the day, but it's going to be a hot one. We'll talk about temperatures and incoming rain chances coming up. And the PSU in Paraguay program gets a new director. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It is 6.30. I'm Tanya Bach. I'm Chris Warner. So I said that it's going to be hot today, but it is hot compared to what we have seen here lately. August has kind of spoiled us compared to what July did to us. Um, hot today actually means seasonable. The temperatures we're going to see today and over the next few days are actually about where they should be for this time of year. So it's hot, yes, but... It's right where it should be for August. Seventh and Rage Line sun is slowly climbing into the sky. It looks pretty good so far. Temperatures looking good this morning as well. 63 in Joplin. We're looking at 65 in Yates Center, 63 Fort Scott, 62 Columbus and Miami and the Osho and Monette. So not a bad start to the day. As the kids get on the bus this morning, about 7 a.m. Should be around 63 degrees with maybe a passing cloud or two as we head home around 3 o'clock, 90 degrees under most Mostly sunny skies. We're heading for an afternoon high of 92 today. It's going to be hot, but it's going to be seasonable. 85 by noon, 91 by 5, and 85 this evening. Clear skies prevail overnight. 64 for a low, 71 at 11, 68 by 2 a.m. And we are still watching scattered storm chances building in starting this weekend. 92 on Saturday, 93 on Sunday. Mostly cloudy skies otherwise. These are scattered storms, so not a complete wash out of your weekend plans, but you definitely want to keep an eye to the sky. We'll talk more about those rain chances, how much rain we're looking at, and uh, look at the seven day forecast as well. All right, sounds like a plan. Thanks, Chris. Well, Ukrainians living in the four states are thinking about their homeland as Wednesday marks the 31st anniversary of Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union. The war in Ukraine is entering its seventh month now, and those we spoke to in Joplin say the war makes it a hard day to celebrate. One saying it's obvious that Ukrainians want their country to remain its own sovereign nation. Another looks for the little things to celebrate. We are celebrating this day, 24th of August, and we celebrate it with flowers and champagne until this, until this year. 
Oleksandr says he hopes the war in Ukraine ends as soon as possible. Pittsburgh State University's PSU in Paraguay program recently named a new director who has a lot of traveling experience herself. KOAM's Yana Hatula has more. Angela Moots has been there herself, traveling to France to study abroad before going back because of the new exciting culture. Traveling is just an amazing experience. Studying abroad, it really opens your eyes to older cultures. It helps you step outside your comfort zone. She encourages students to try studying abroad because it may help them later on in their lives. No matter what you're going to be doing in the future, you're always going to be interacting with people who have other beliefs and opinions. Um, so it's a really great skill to have. Moots is excited to lead the Paraguay program on campus. Currently, there are eight students from Paraguay at PSU, while 13 are in Paraguay, preparing for their own trip to southeast Kansas. It's really great for students in Paraguay to be able to be in their home country and to study abroad and to learn about the American classroom and to learn, but then also to come to Pittsburgh um, and to continue their studies. The program is great for students in Paraguay, as they can stay with their family while getting used to the U.S. university system. Juan Ignacio Molo moved to the States two semesters ago. Now he's connected with many students, experiencing university in the U.S. It's to join a fraternity so I can be with Americans all the time. Then there are many activities here at PSU. I'm in the soccer team, rugby team, and yeah, it's pretty nice. I like it. Molo agrees with Moots. The experience is beneficial. Maybe tomorrow I'm working in, I don't know, in Asia and since I have the opportunity to go out and like experience a different culture, I will know how to talk to the people, I mean, I mean, how to communicate with different people around the world. In Pittsburgh, Jana Hautala, KOAM News. PSU faculty members travel to Paraguay to teach future PSU students general education classes needed before coming to Pittsburgh. On this date, back in 1984, Truman Capote, author of In Cold Blood and Breakfast at Tiffany's, passes away. Capote passed away at the age of 59 in Los Angeles. His book, In Cold Blood, was a pioneering true crime, tri true crime novel. In Cold Blood tells the tale of the 1959 murder of the Clutter family in Holcomb, Kansas. Now Richard Hickok and Perry Smith, two parolees from the Kansas State Penitentiary, decided to rob Herbert Clutter, a successful farmer, after hearing a rumor that he kept a cash-filled safe in his home. Two men arrived at the Clutter farmhouse on November 15, 1959. After discovering there was no safe, they slit Herbert Clutter's throat and shot him in the head. Perry Smith then shot Clutter's wife, Bonnie, and his two teenage children, Nancy and Kenyon. Hickok and Smith were captured by police over a month later in Las Vegas. At trial, they pleaded temporary insanity, but were convicted and sentenced to death. Both men died by hanging on April 14, 1965 at the Kansas State Penitentiary in Lansing. Being from western Kansas, uh, we all know that story for sure. It's, uh, I mean, it certainly blood. sounds like a, a, a sad but fascinating true crime story for sure. I don't know why they thought that the farmer would have a safe with money in it. So I had no idea either. And it's unfortunately, they found Kansas. that he did not have that. <laughs> uh, quick check of the forecast. So we're talking about those storm chances. They are scattered Saturday, and then they become, they're still scattered Sunday, but there's a few more of them as we head into Sunday. And then we get some good thunderstorm chances as we roll into the start of the work week, Monday and Tuesday for sure, keeping temperatures at a seasonable level for us. A seven day forecast also shows 96 tomorrow, by the way, it's going to be a hot one. And then the rain chances build in and they last with us through at least the middle of next week. All right, that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. We'll have more on the ongoing aluminum shortage. Plus, we're going to take another look at that forecast when we come back. In Consumer Watch this morning, production and supply chain issues have hurt companies across the economy, and that includes the beer industry, which continues to see aluminum can supplies fizzle. Max Darrow explains. At S27 Ales in San Jose, California, the founders take a lot of pride in their craft. This is probably one of our, if not our best seller. But Lucas Szymanowski says one of the more complex parts of the craft these days is getting their hands on aluminum cans. Cans have been the biggest problem for us. Brewers across the country are dealing with a can shortage. 
At the beginning of the pandemic, the biggest challenge was simply demand. Bart Watson from the Brewers Association says when bars and restaurants had to shut down in the spring of 2020, people started drinking more at home. And greater demand for aluminum cans, and that extended to other beverage products like soda, and so there simply weren't enough cans to go around. That's been followed by ongoing supply chain issues, and the need for cans continues. According to the Aluminum Association, domestic demand for aluminum was up more than 5% in the first quarter of the year. Before this aluminum can shortage, they used to be able to order big pallets of cans like this one behind me whenever they needed them. Now they have to wait for their supplier to alert them that cans are available and they're paying more per pallet as well. When we order aluminum cans, five, seven, ten thousand dollars that has to be spent because the cans are available in that moment. Experts say supplies are slowly getting better. Prices are going to remain high, but availability hopefully will improve. We're starting to see again more capacity coming online, which will help. In the meantime, brewers are helping each other. In the community, I mean, it became very common. Everybody to message everybody else, hey, I have a need. I need a half pallet, one pound of cans. Do you have any incoming? Can I borrow those? Szymanowski says the community will continue to work together to weather the challenges of the can shortage. Max Darrow, CBS News, San Jose, California. Amazon is shutting down Amazon Care, its hybrid virtual and in-home health service. An email sent to the staff says the telehealth service will end operations at the end of the year. It launched in 2019 to serve Amazon's own employees in Washington State. It later expanded and began virtual visits nationwide and had plans for in-person services in more cities this year. Well, Peloton is trying to pick up the pace of its recently slumping sales by teaming up with Amazon. Its original exercise bike and other gear is now being sold on Amazon in the U.S. Earlier this month, Peloton said it's cutting jobs, closing stores, and shifting delivery work to third-party vendors. Peloton Interactive shares surged 20% yesterday, but they're still down nearly 90% over the past year. That's it for Consumer Watch. Let's go over to Chris for another look at your forecast. Now, right now, it's seventh and range line. The sun's coming up and it's looking pretty decent. And we've got, once again, good temperatures to go with it. 63 in Joplin right now under very clear skies. We got 60s across the area, 64 for Donia, 65 for Chanute, 64 in Lamar, and 64 in Carthage. As kids get on the bus, which they are set to do so in approximately 18 minutes in most areas, it'll be 63 at 7 a.m. with some passing clouds. If we go through the day, it's going to be sunny, it's going to be clear, and it's going to be a hot one. 90 by 3 o'clock today when they get off the bus, heading for an afternoon high of 92 degrees. 85 by noon, 91 by 5, and 85 by 8 with sunny skies. Now, these temperatures are hot, but they are actually seasonable for this time of year. Going into tonight, temperatures also look pretty decent as well. Another cool evening, 64 for an overnight low under clear skies. 71 by 11, 68 by 2 a.m., reaching that overnight low early tomorrow morning. Watching those scattered thunderstorm chances both Saturday and Sunday, unfortunately, for the weekend. 92 Saturday, 93 on Sundays. We can take a look at what the future track is expecting. So as we go through Saturday, we start the day with some scattered thunderstorms and we get cloudy skies. And then Sunday, more widespread scattered thunderstorms through the day under, again, cloudy skies. And then we head into Monday and into Tuesday. Temperatures heat up, but we still deal with a lot of scattered thunderstorm chances. Tomorrow's high is looking to be 96, one of the warmest days we'll see for a little bit. Rain chances build in this weekend. They persist all the way through at least the middle of next week with scattered thunderstorm chances each day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But they also bring the temperatures down into the upper 80s by Wednesday. The only thing is, is as you can see, the overnight lows start to creep back up and start hovering around 70 degrees. So still nice, but a little milder than what we've seen. More of the KOAM Morning News right after this. We take this time to honor today's four state hero, Lewis Peck. Corporal Peck served in the Army from 1952 to 1953. He served in Korea with the 45th Infantry Division, Company 179. During his service, he earned the Combat Infantry Badge, the Purple Heart, and the Bronze Star, among other medals. We thank you. Today's four state hero, Lewis Peck. Time now to celebrate some birthdays on this Thursday, and we begin in Frontenac with Kaysen Mirando, who is turning two years old today. Happy birthday to you, Kaysen. And we've got a kindergartner at Meadowview Elementary with love from Nana and Papa going out to 
Adrienne Blackburn, who is now six years old in Parsons, Kansas. And we've got Isaac Johnson turning 13 in Columbus. A very happy birthday to you, Isaac. And in Joplin, Cole Lawrence celebrating birthday number 17 this year. And we've got Kayana Goodall turning 18 in Chanute. Kayana, a very happy birthday to you in Chanute. That's cupcakes there. That is a lot of cupcakes. I hope that's 18 cupcakes. Might be. Might be. And we've got Blake Guffey. All right. Celebrating number 41 this year. Looks like he's been traveling and having some fun. We've also got Sean Harvey over in Buffalo, Kansas, turning 49 today. Happy birthday to you, Sean. Marlene Ashbacher celebrating birthday number 70 this year. And if Marlene is celebrating, her twin Maureen is celebrating number 70 as well. Maureen Barcelona. So happy birthday to Marlene and Maureen. And we've got Jason Miller in Miami turning 49 years old today. Jason also happens to own a flower shop. And then we've got another special birthday here. Jason Fisher in Camden Point, Missouri. Just happens to be Chef Anthony's brother. He's over here, he's celebrating. That's why we're making chocolate chip cakes too. Chip cakes, whatever. Anyway, Jason's turning, we're making cookies. They're, he's turning 44 this year, so a very happy birthday to Jason. Cakes, cookies, it's all the same to me. It's, it's dessert, it's edible, isn't it? Yeah, happy birthday, Jason. You've got a good brother. <laughs> all right, if you have a birthday or an anniversary, you can send them in. All you have to do is email them to us at birthdays with an S. KOAMTV.com or go to birthdays at KOAMnewsnow.com. And Chef Anthony is here. We wanted to ask him, what else can they do? There's a birthday club they can participate in, right? They can participate in birthday club. Isn't it an awesome deal? It is an awesome like, opportunity. I think your brother should participate. What do you think? Uh, I think he's a kid. I think I'm going to find a kid though. That's a great idea. And you know how you do that? By going to KOAMnewsnow.com and signing up for that KOAM birthday club. Because once they get signed up, they get excellent deals from local businesses. Hey, we're already done with the birthday club, it looks like. We're moving on. So, vinyl making a comeback. So British companies created the world's first bioplastic record to help musicians sell their music in a more green way. Now, when we switch over to the KOAM Morning News at 7, Ian Lee tells us more about how vinyl is going green. Let's take a look now at your forecast, shall we? It is a nice day so far. It looks pleasant outside, and if you go outdoors, it feels pleasant outside. 63 with clear skies this fine morning. And we've got 60s all across the board. 61 in Sedan, 64 in Independence, 64 in Lamar and Nevada as well, and 65 over in Stockton. Kids should be boarding the bus here any minute now. And as they do, it should be about 63 with a, maybe a passing cloud or two for some of you. And as they get off the bus about 3 o'clock, 90 degrees is where it's going to be under mostly sunny skies. We're heading for an afternoon high of 92, 85 by noon, 91 by 5, 85 by 8 o'clock tonight with these sunny skies. So, yes, it's technically hot, but it is seasonable. Going into the night, another nice evening ahead of us. 64 for an overnight low under clear skies, 71 by 11, 68 by 2 a.m. and get into that overnight low early tomorrow morning. Still watching those scattered thunderstorm chances both Saturday and Sunday. 92 Saturday, 93 Sunday. These are scattered storms, which you can see on the future track. Saturday, they start early. Then we just stay cloudy through the day. Sunday, they build back in a few more of these scattered storms through the day. And by Monday and Tuesday, even more scattered thunderstorm chances to talk about. And the seven day forecast shows us first off Friday. We can't forget clear and 96 and then the rain chances once they build in Saturday they hang out with us all the way to the middle of next week. We got more of the KOA morning news right after this. Back of today's top headlines the news you need to know before you head out the door. Early morning head on crash takes the life of a school superintendent on the first day of school shortly after eight yesterday morning. Authorities responded to the scene of a fatal crash on Route T two miles southwest of Bolivar, Missouri. Killed 
In the crash, the superintendent of Dadeville Schools, 48-year-old Matthew Bushy of Bolivar, 17-year-old, was also in the vehicle and was transported with serious injuries to a Springfield, Missouri hospital. Missouri State Highway Patrol says the Ford F-150 crossed the center line and struck the Bushy vehicle head-on. Pickup was driven by a 16-year-old male from Bolivar. His name is not being released. In a statement on the website, the Dadeville School District shared the news of Bushy's passing. You can read that full statement from Dadeville Schools on our website at koamnewsnow.com. City of Joplin holds a public meeting to discuss a property tax levy in the city. The council approved an ordinance that includes a tax levy on the Joplin Public Library. Joplin says the city property tax represents a very small portion of the overall property tax liability for the citizens of Joplin. And the PSU in Paraguay program has a new director, Angela Moots, who served as the university's study abroad coordinator, brings a lot of traveling experience to the program. The 15-year-old program has students from Paraguay come finish their college degree in Pittsburgh. She encourages students on campus to take a trip abroad to learn about the different cultures. According to Moots, the experience traveling brings can help people later on in their lives. One million cups hits the road to Carthage. Every Wednesday they meet for coffee while two entrepreneurs speak to local chamber members about their business. The purpose of these meetings is to help get feedback and empower small business owners. One Million Cups is a nonprofit organization with more than 160 chapters across the country. And that's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Do you need to know before you head out the door, it's going to be a hot one today by the, compared to what we've seen, but seasonable temperatures. 92 for an afternoon high under sunny skies, 85 by noon, 91 by 5, and 85 again by 8 tonight. And overnight, dipping back down to 64 for an overnight low, getting there gradually under mostly clear skies again. And then the weekend forecast, we're still watching scattered shower and thunderstorm chances both Saturday and Sunday. In fact, those scattered shower and thunderstorm chances will stick with us once they kick in all the way through at least the middle of next week, bringing us some much needed rain across the area and keeping temperatures seasonable, hot but seasonable, something I think that we can live with. Keep those 80s on Wednesday yeah, going on. I like that. All right, well, coming up today at noon, we're making Mexican cornbread salad in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Okay. Bread and salad. That's interesting. That, I'm kind of curious about this. Of course, your morning news continues on KOAM with CBS Mornings. And coming up, see men who are going through period pain. It's all to bring awareness to a severe condition that may harm a woman's fertility. Hmm. Plus, we're going to hear from a doctor about treatments that can offer relief. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14, where your only local morning news continues. And this morning, Chef Anthony comes back in our studio. We're going to show you different types of cookies you can make with chocolate chip cookie dough. Plus, a man with a metal detector becomes one woman's hero. I'm looking more forward to these cookies. We can just, you know, not do the rest of the newscast uh, at 7 a.m. and just focus on the cookies. There you go. That's my thought. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for us for now here on KOAM. We're going to see you back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And, of course, don't forget to come see us at noon for our More Power Tour in the O Show. That's right. We're going to do it all again today at noon.